Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am going to be sharing with you guys today how I transitioned Riker into a big boy bed. It's been a while since I've done a sit down video, so this feels a little bit weird, but without further ado, let's hop on into how I sleep trained Riker into a twin size bed. All right, so first off, my cat's in the background. He's messing with the blinds, so don't mind that. But anyway, um, okay. I only have very limited time to record this video because Riker is currently napping, so. Anyway, all right, so we decided to transition Riker into a, directly from his crib into a twin-sized bed. Now, I will show you guys here in a second. He is currently napping, but I will show you guys the setup. And he currently has, so we ordered a platform bed. We ordered this bed frame for Kaya when she was transitioning. We did transition Kaya to a toddler bed first. And then shortly after, within like two months, we decided to transition her over to a twin size bed because she just was a lot more comfortable. She had more room. Mike and I are both pretty tall. Like Mike's like six foot, I'm 5'10", so our kids are like taller as well. So we have memory foam mattresses on both of the kids' beds. Um, Riker's does not have a box spring, Kaya's does. Kaya, we gave her a box spring when she turned about three or four, um, when we were more comfortable with her being higher up off the ground. The nice thing with the platform bed is it is about the same height as a toddler bed, but you don't have to pay that extra money for a toddler bed. That is ultimately why we decided to transition both of our kids directly over to a twin size bed, because like I said, that height of a toddler bed is about the same as the platform bed, um, and we do have twin sizes in both of them. Another thing we have on Riker's bed right now are like bed rails. We have guardrails, I believe. I got them from Walmart or from Amazon, I can't remember, but I will have those linked down below. I'll have everything that I'm talking about linked down below for you guys, including the platform bed, the mattress we have. So the bed setup then is just the platform bed, no box spring, mattress directly over, and there's plenty of little metal slats like little like bars to hold the mattress up so you do not need a box spring um, and then we have the bed rails as well and memory foam mattresses so that is the setup now let's go through the process of how we transitioned him okay so a my kids like the door open okay and b Riker actually slammed the door one time and broke the door off the hinges. So the kids' door is completely off right now and I'm okay with that, and here's why. Because the kids get scared if the door is closed at night, their bedroom is, this is my room, and their bedroom is legit right across the hallway, like a foot away from our bedroom. Um, they like to be able to see us when they're going to bed, and I feel like that's the best of both worlds. They can, they can still see us, but they're sleeping in their own beds and they feel comfortable, and comfortable enough to go to sleep in their own beds. So right now um, we have a an adjustable gate there. We do plan on getting a screw in gate because Riker can knock it down. Um, but once we have the screw in gate, he won't be able to climb over that or push it down. It'll be much nicer. So there's my tip to you guys. Um, if you have the closed door issue um, with your kids and they get scared when the door is closed, um, you don't have to take the door off, obviously, but you can just put a gate there for the meantime. They can still see you. Um, it works out really well for us. So with Riker, when we first took him out of his crib, the reason why we decided to do this it was like two months before he turned two, we decided to do this and it was because we had, he was breaking out of his crib, we moved his mattress all the way to the floor and he was still breaking out of his crib, okay? And he was falling out of the crib and that worried me because I didn't want him to fall out and get hurt. <laughs> the cat is being so cute right now. <gasps> oh, anyway, okay, so he kept falling out of, like breaking out of the crib and like falling and that's quite a long fall for a little guy, so decided to just, mm, we're gonna do the transition because mm -hmm. it scared me that he was falling from such a height and whatever. So um, to transition him, I got him really fun sheets and I got him new bedding and we have pillows. We made it very fun for him. And the first two weeks, solid two weeks, we would have to go in the room and put him back down, go in the room and put him back down and he, because he'd be playing with toys and he was ripping up books. He just had access to everything at that point. 
So then after two weeks, we decided to take all of the books out. We decided to take all of the toys out of the room temporarily um, so that the room was just for sleep. Uh, we do have a TV in the kids' room as well, and we like to put a sleep timer on there, and we usually play like Planet Earth and like the animal shows, the calming David Attenborough voice. That's what my husband and I go to sleep to, and the kids have done really well with going to sleep to that as well instead of a noise machine, etc. Um, I know that the lights aren't like necessarily the best for them, um, but we do have it on a 30 minute sleep timer. So typically by the time they're getting really sleepy, the TV's turning off anyways, and it just soothes them right to sleep. We love it. So anyway, um, after two weeks, we took everything out of there. So he had no distractions. Napping was very difficult. There, are, there were days, and I will warn you, there will be days where your child will not nap when they transition into the big kid bed, okay? Feels like a big deal at the time. In the long run, a couple of naps that are missed are not the end of the world. And I promise you that you and your child will have way better sleep by the end of this. I would say by about a month, we were at a really good spot where Riker was sleeping through the night in his bed. So we would go through Riker's typical bedtime routine. So bath, lotion, jammies on, read a book, and then I would lay him down and then I would turn on the show and within like 30 to 45 minutes, he would be out. By a month in, he would be out. He, he knew by that time that it was time for sleep. So what we did for consistency, just to let him know that it was time for bed, is whenever he would get out of his bed, we wouldn't say anything. We would just grab him, put him back in bed, tuck him in, and leave. We did this like 30 times a night, okay? But I promise the work pays off. After, like I said, after about a month, like it got, it gradually got better and better, especially after we took out the toys and the books and he knew that there was nothing else in there for him to play with or get into, he would just put himself to bed. We would lay him down and he'd put himself to bed. We recently have kind of regressed a little bit. Um, there is a two-year-old sleep regression, so some people will advise you from making that transition to a toddler or twin size bed until after they've gone through their um, sleep regression. And I think the recommended age was like two and a half to three to transition into a twin size bed. But because again, it's a platform bed, we were more comfortable with him being up like only like this high off the ground versus him falling out of his crib all the time. We also made sure that we consulted with our pediatrician because we always advocates for safe sleeping. So I do wanna tell you guys that as well. I know it's boring to hear that in the video, but I have to say it that we are advocates for safe sleeping and to always check with your pediatrician before you do any of these big life changes with the kids. That's what we do anyways. And it works out really well. We love our pediatrician, she's amazing. So anyways, um, once we got to about a month in, like I said, Riker would start parting himself to sleep. Recently, we went through that two-year-old sleep regression, and I would just say it's more of a case of FOMO because, you know, they, they're developing so fast, and once they hit two, they're really aware of, like, situations and events, etc. They don't want to miss out on things, and they just think it's a party all the time. So, what we have done recently is just a going back to that consistency of, okay, back to bed, back to bed, back to bed, and now he can knock down the gate that he has. So we are getting rid of that gate, putting the screw in gate for the time being into the door frame um, so that it can't be pushed down and then the like gate like latches on. There's no way that the kids would be able to like open it or move it. Kaya can climb over it if she needs to. If she needs to go potty in the middle of the night, she is able to climb over it with ease, but Riker is not able to climb over it, which that is the key here. That is the main takeaway is we just want Riker to stay in the room at night. So once he figures out that he cannot get out anymore and or if he gets too tired to do it, um, he will lay himself back down within 15 minutes. But my biggest piece of advice is just consistency and making sure that you just keep putting them back in the bed. Don't say anything to them. Don't act like this is awake time. Make sure the bedroom light is off. Make sure there's not a whole lot of noise going on and just keep putting them back into bed and putting them back into bed. There are a couple of sleep training books that I will leave linked down below for you guys, but I'm gonna go over my top three tips here and like the overview of the entire video. Tip number one is to make sure that you are consistent with your bedtime routine. Nothing else changes except for the bed itself. 
Tip number two is to make sure that they cannot get out of their room and that their room is only for sleeping. So take away all of the distractions such as toys and books, etc. Learn from me because we had a, like a dozen books destroyed, like ripped apart from this part of the like sleep training stage. And my number three tip, which is definitely not the least, is to make sure that when they're getting out of their beds that you just go back in there and you put them into their bed and tuck them in and keep doing that over and over again as many times as needed until they understand because you are teaching them how to sleep, okay? And this is going to be a tool that they have with them for the rest of their lives and how to soothe themselves back to sleep, how to put themselves to sleep is a very, very important tool for children to have throughout the rest of their life. So if you teach them now the good like foundational like rules of how to put yourself to sleep when it's time for sleep, teaching them those things right now is going to set up a really good foundation for as they get older um, and then knowing when bedtime is. Now Kaya, when 8, 8.30 rolls around, she knows it's time for bed, puts her jammies on and she gets into her bed. So. Anyways, all right, you guys, I hope that helped you with your toddlers transitioning into big kid beds. I know it is, seriously, it's such a like daunting thought when you are when you realize like, oh my gosh, it's time for me to transition, whether it be because they're breaking out of the crib too much or because your pediatrician says that it is time for them to transition or whatever it may be, whatever your click is saying that it is time to transition. I get it, it is tough. I've got Kaya running around in the background. All right, if you are a chaotic mama like I am, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. If you have any additional tips or tricks for other moms out there, I'd love if you put those in the comments down below. If you're new here, I'd love if you considered subscribing. I do a ton of mommy style content here on my channel, all the way from like the birth of my son and baby hauls, clothing hauls for myself, weight loss journey. My postpartum weight loss journey has been a journey let me tell you about it and i have a ton of videos on that for you as well in day in the lives and routines and if you like cleaning i do have a cleaning channel down below as well so all right you guys i'm gonna leave you there for today and i will see you in a couple days for another really fun video okay bye guys and happy sleeping <laughs>